Every fighter has a story. What is yours? In life, some are born with the threads of greatness woven into their very DNA. Their path seems predestined. Their success, a natural extension of their being. These individuals, touched by the hand of fortune, carry with them the genetic markers of achievement, as if their very destiny was scripted long before their first breath. He keeps making me money, man. Keep lining your guys up. I see you, man. He's the yeah, manager listen, for like the last three yeah. of my opponents. Listen, listen, listen. Keep lining them up. Listen, you know what? I'm gonna keep racking them up. Greatness is not the sole domain of the naturally gifted. For many, the journey to success is shaped in the fire of relentless effort and unwavering determination. These are the blue-collar warriors who rise each day to chip away at the mountain of their ambitions, one arduous step at a time. Monday, you know, it's the start of the week. We start hard Monday, we finish hard by Friday. When viewed under the microscope of success, the differences between the naturally gifted and the self-made diminish. The DNA of success, while perhaps more visible in some, exists within all who strive. Every breakthrough, every triumph, is built on the foundation of perseverance and unyielding effort. There is no shortcut to greatness. The journey is defined by the steps we take, each one necessary, each one building upon the last. The gifted and the grinders alike understand this immutable truth. There is no substitute for hard work, no magic formula that can replace the grind. Greatness is not a birthright, it is earned. Whether you are born with the spark or kindle it through sheer will, the path to success is paved with discipline, sacrifice, and resilience. In the end, it is not the origin of one's journey that defines them, but the unwavering commitment to see it through. Greatness is a mosaic formed from the countless stories of triumph and toil. For those born with it and those who earn it, the destination is the same, but the journey, ah, the journey, is what shapes the soul. This is Seven Days Out with Bilal Muhammad. Good morning, Chicagoans. It's a beautiful Monday morning in the windy city. The sun is shining, and here's the bad news. Last evening's storms left some trees down, and another storm is coming this evening. Get your trash cans out, and don't forget your umbrellas. Enjoy the morning sunshine, stay dry, and have a fantastic day, Chicago. Holy s***. <laughs> Bilal Muhammad. What's up, man? How you doing, How are you doing man? man? How you doing, man? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a good way to start my morning. <laughs> Oh, the Xfinity. Oh, yes. oh you didn't know who this was? Cable you thought it was guy. my sister? I, 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 <laughs> You're like, yeah, who's this guy? <laughs> that is hilarious. That is awesome. You got a big fight coming up. I know. I'm, he's about to wolf uh, Leon Edwards. <laughs> you know, you know. I already know. Inshallah. Listen, Inshallah. He, he, you already know. He breaks in the third, fourth. Just keep that pressure. I'm mad he didn't want to. Yeah. yeah. I already, that's awesome. I would have never expected that. <laughs> Um, we are a little over a week until UFC 304 in Manchester. Bilal Muhammad is now days away from his lifelong dream of fighting for a UFC title. All of the years of relentless training and determination has Muhammad ready for his rematch against Leon Edwards from three years prior, a bout that ended in a no contest due to an eye poke. Um. It's gonna be a, a fun ride with Bilal being champ. You know, it's gonna be a different look, different uh, earned respect, perspective. Still gonna have the haters, but fuel, proving people wrong, proving the doubters, and just knowing, you know, 
I've been here since day one, believed in him since day one. So for me, any other option of thinking is just not, it's irrelevant, you know? Yes, Leon's good, but we come for gold, and gold is the gold. Now with Edwards as the champion, this title fight means a lot more to Muhammad and his team. It's been a long road since UFC Fight Night 90, when Muhammad made his debut as a late replacement against Alan Joban back in July 2016. Ironically, eight years later, he will have the chance to become the first Palestinian champion in UFC history. It's, it's huge. It's gonna be, it's honestly, it's, it's, it's historical. Because like I said, we never had that star. We didn't. We didn't have someone to look up to, growing up. We didn't have like we had like a Muhammad Ali. You had your Khabibs, but they weren't Palestinian. They were Muslims, but they weren't Palestinian. So like, now we know. Okay, you know what? Hey, the young kids growing up. You see now, gyms are full with young Palestinians now trying to be fighters. You know, it's like he's he's changing the narrative for all of us. It's like there's a chance for us to be a star athlete. And it's like Bilal, he wasn't born with it. He really worked worked his ass off for everything. Like it wasn't like. He was born gifted with speed or gifted with strength. He's literally in the gym 24 seven. I mean, for me, it's just seeing his work ethic, um, working out three times a day. It's all he believes in. Him leaving college to, you know, to go through with UFC shows me they took it seriously. Um, and Bilal, he's a straight A student, um, got a Victorian, all that. So to, for him to like leave school and continue with the UFC, uh, shows that he really wanted to do it. And when I really took him seriously is when he won the Titan FC belt. Um, when he won that match, that was very inspiring to go through that fight and win and become a champion. So when I knew he was the champion of that Titan FC, I knew UFC had a bad thing coming. My next guest just defeated Steve Carl this past weekend at Titan FC 38 and is the new Titan FC welterweight champion. Bilal Muhammad joins me here on the show. Bilal, how's it going? Man, it's going good, man. How's it going for you? It, it's going very well. And man, you know, you won the title. Has it sunk in yet that you are the Titan FC welterweight champion? Yeah, man, man it's crazy, man. It's uh, It's been a long road, man. And it's, uh, I mean, all the work, all hard work's finally paying off. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know if you remember the first time you and I spoke, I actually was talking to you about, uh, you know, fighting for a vacant title. And here we are, you know, not even a year later, you, you, you know, you won the title. Uh, you know, you're the Titan FC champ. Um, did you expect this to come this fast? Uh, I honestly didn't think I was gonna be fighting for a title this quick. But um, I mean, I beat everybody they put in front of me. And uh, I'm happy that I kept uh, and Titan's been really good with uh, giving me better opponents every single time, giving me tougher guys. So I'm glad they did it that way. It's May 4th right now and we're recording this interview. The UFC's got a card coming up here July 23rd in Chicago, which is where you're from. Um, is that Would that sort of be the dream scenario, you getting to fight in the UFC and getting to fight in Chicago? Yeah, that would be, be amazing. And I, I'll sit there. I have all my people flying out to, with me uh, whenever I go uh, anywhere out of town or anything like that. So just to have them be able just to go down the street to Chicago, United Center, it would be crazy how much people will be there. Uh, has your management been in contact with the UFC at all? I'm sure they saw the fight with it, uh, you know, the, the matchup being on Fight Pass. Uh, I haven't been in contact with them, but uh, hopefully I get that call soon or something from them. A lot of times is, you know, there's, like you say, there's athletes that have, like, superior, what do you call it, gift talent. And then there's a fight, then there's people, in any sport, you have people who have natural ability and skill, and, and then there are other ones who really strive and work at their craft and those are the ones you use you, you support the most and you and you and you feel proud of because those are the guys those are the guys that really worked at their job i mean you know like the lebron james and the michael jordans and a lot of those guys of course it came natural for them like khabib and a lot of those guys it came natural but then there are other guys that it took their determination and guts and there's in their strive to achieve their go to achieve their success because they see what the other guys are doing and they say, well, I, I can be just as good as him or better. And that's what he is. He is better than them.
This ain't like Dubai. We ain't got air conditioning in the gym here. It's different. He's ready. I've been telling it from a long time. He's ready. He's been ready. For me, he's already the champion. He already won. I know it. I know. I know whenever he's in shape. He pushed me. He's on my face. It's different. You can see it. It looks like he's not that hard, but whenever you are with him in front of you, he's always moving, always changing guards, always pressuring you, putting his head in your face, and if now he's shooting. Gosh, man, I think it's champion champion pressure that's a champion pressure uh, i've been telling it i've been telling it he's the champion 170 nobody better than him i'm working with the best in the world we're going to show why we're the best in the world it's fighting at the highest level dude one of the things that you want to see dude i mean we, we saw it this weekend on on the on C Rod and Christian's fight, dude. It was a very competitive fight, right? They were, they, he was in it, in it, in it. But just one little thing, dude. One little thing that you sleep on. That you have your neck, dude. I didn't address it, dude. I get choked out. And that's how fast it happens. That's how fast it happens. Dude. So you gotta always, always be very aware. Be very aware, dude, of what's happening. They're attacking my neck. Dude. What, what are the things that are gonna finish me, dude? If somebody has their hands on my, around my neck, they, it could end up very quick very quick somebody has his legs wrapped around my head it's gonna end up real quick so i have to address the moment right away right away i gotta abandon what i'm doing and address it right away you know so just being conscious and being understanding of what's going on what's going on what's going on in, in your fight that's it man i mean other than that let's keep on grinding dude we got one more week here till we leave for Bilal and let's go you know leon edwards versus Bilal muhammad is not getting the, the respect that it deserves for whatever fucking stupid reason people don't like Bilal mm. muhammad i don't get Makes it no at sense. all i think he's awesome yep. he's a great guy he's a cool great guy he's a really great guy, great guy. and people don't want to see him fight it's just weird thank god the ufc didn't bend the knee to the fans you know no. complaining I, those fans are ridiculous i got a prediction on this because he disagrees with me i think because he's palestinian you're going to see the entire Arab world come out for this fight. Well, they definitely will. Yeah. I don't think that's controversial at all. Yeah. Bilal will be the first fighter to win a championship for Palestine with the UFC. That's going to give us a big name. It's going to make people remember our country, remember his name, remember Palestine. And um, the more successful he is, the more awareness it gives to our country. So the more championships he wins, the more fights he wins, it keeps putting us on the map. Yeah. But as far as that being, and you and I have a good amount of money on this. You said yeah. it's going to be the most watched pay per view. Yeah. Yo, you know I, another I fight? Think it'll be big. I, I, I it'll be big. It won't be the Palestine. most watched. Not, not the it most won't watched. be as big yeah. as Connor. It's more or less like instead of Leon having home home field advantage, it's more like Bilal's going to have home field advantage because, like I said previously, that with the number, with the with the amount of Muslims in Manchester or even in London, for the fact, it didn't matter where the fight was. It's just that, and then of course the number of friends and people that are planned there, you know, who planned to go because everybody was anticipating once this thing got booked, once this fight got scheduled, a lot of people were planning to make their, you know, they don't want to miss it. Honestly, you can't really, you can't really put in words. Like I said, it's, it's, it's historic. It's like, you, you never, like, it's like you can't really, because we've never seen this before. We never had somebody like in our people fighting for a title or fighting for a championship or it's like on the main stage of anything you know and he's been doing it the last five years you know it's like he's 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 been our champion already now this is just, just like this kind of like the icing on the cake feeling good brother seeing the cage right now feeling this energy i already know this crowd's about to go nuts i'm hyped you know but that's what Lou's here for this this is the first time Lou's here to keep me calm Chill. How are you? Good. Okay. Nice steak. Nice steak. Oh, it's hummus. Hummus? No hummus? Not today. Not today. Out here. After the fight. After the fight. After the fight, we eat it real good. Yeah, we're waking up every day. We're we're overworking, right? Everybody always looks at me and asks me, "What's your schedule?" I'm like, "Well, what I do it shouldn't be what you do, because what I do is I push myself to a different level. I push myself harder than all these guys. You." The guys with the, the science books and the, the guys who went to school, if they hear my schedule, they're going to be like, bro, you're dumb. What are you doing? This, this, and this. But my, my body knows about it. My body understands what we're doing, how we do it. And they know what the system is. 
my body makes adjustments. When people, oh, how do you train during Ramadan? My body adjusts. Why do you do this during this time? Why do you adjust? Why are you training it three times? I know how hard I have to work. I know what I have to do to get there. I know what it's going to take to get that fight. And once I enter that cage, I know there's going to be no stone unturned. There's not going to be any doubt in my mind that I didn't push hard enough. When you see Habib and Islam and all these guys, when you go and train with them guys, you understand how hard they work and people will sit there and say, oh, they're just lucky or they're just this or just to that. I brought that same mentality back with me, knowing that it's there's no... There is no magic to it, right? It's just outworking everybody else. It's just pushing yourself harder than everybody else. When you're feeling a little bit tired, when you don't want to do it, you just got to get up and make sure you do do it. When you don't want to do the extra round, when you we just had five rounds that night, I was like, bro, I'm ready to go. I'm done at three. But those extra two rounds, that's what those extra two rounds are going to make the, the difference in the fight. Those extra two rounds are going to make the difference when my coach is not going to have to tell me don't let him bully your son. My coach is going to sit there and give me the right information that I'm going to make adjustments in, in between fights. There is no motivation that's needed. I don't need motivation. I don't. I know what I have to do. I have one mission, one goal. So everything that comes out of my coach's mouth is going to be toward that one mission, toward that one goal. These are solid wins, right? I mean, he has come a long way. No, the good, the, yeah, the, the, the good wins. I said that. It's, he hasn't proven. I can't be deluded and approach it as, it, as it's the first fight. Because um, it's not. In the world of combat sports, pressure is the invisible opponent that every fighter must conquer. It's the weight of expectations, the fear of failure, and the relentless pace of the fight itself. On July 27th in Manchester, at the Co-op Live Arena, the Octagon will once again define a legacy. Bilal Muhammad, the proud Palestinian, will step in to face Leon Edwards for the UFC welterweight title. For Muhammad, this fight transcends a mere contest of physical prowess. It is a monumental clash where he is willing to accept the immense pressure of representing his people and his heritage. Edwards, a formidable adversary, is driven by an unyielding desire to etch his name into history as the greatest welterweight of all time. The weight of legacy and the burning ambition to be remembered only add layers to the pressure both men face. As spectators, we watch these fighters put their lives and health on the line, but it is crucial to remember that some of them are fighting for causes that transcend the pursuit of a belt. Both Muhammad and Edwards are fighting not only for personal glory, but also for the pride and honor of those they represent. It is impossible to fully grasp the pressure of a fighter who carries the hopes and dreams of their people. In that simple message lies the reason we should respect all fighters who hold these values true. In the end, it is this extraordinary capacity to confront and conquer pressure that defines true greatness in the world of fighting. This is more than a battle for a title. It is a testament to what a champion really is.